Every voluntary movement requires the interaction of nerve and muscle cells. For example, if we want to bend our forearm, signals have to travel from the brain via the spinal cord to the corresponding muscles. Once these signals reach the muscle fibers, they trigger a contraction. The resulting forces are transferred to the bones via tendons. The nerve cells responsible for activating the muscle fibers are called motor neurons. A distinction is made between upper and lower motor neurons. The lower motor neurons are in direct contact with the muscle cells. The connection points are referred to as motor end plates. The motor end plates can be divided into presynaptic membrane, synaptic cleft, and postsynaptic membrane. The so-called end buttons contain numerous vesicles that contain the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, a substance that is essential for signal transmission at the motor end plate. The excitation transmission proceeds as follows. An action potential reaches the terminal button. This causes voltage-dependent calcium channels to open and calcium ions to flow in. This causes the vesicles to move towards the synaptic cleft. In the active zone, around 300 vesicles fuse with the presynaptic membrane. The contained neurotransmitter is released and diffuses to the acetylcholine receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. Each of these receptors has two binding sites. If both are occupied, the coupled ion channel opens and sodium ions flow into the muscle cell. This creates what is known as an end plate potential. Voltage-dependent sodium channels at the base of the membrane folds open and ensure that the threshold value is exceeded. This creates an action potential that spreads along the sarcolemma. The signal reaches deep into the muscle cell through invaginations of the cell membrane and initiates a contraction. The binding of acetylcholine to the corresponding receptor usually takes only 2 milliseconds. To prevent the molecules from permanently interacting with the receptors, acetylcholine is broken down into acetate and choline. This is done by an enzyme in the basement membrane. Choline is partly reabsorbed by the neuron and reused. Likewise, synaptic vesicles undergo recycling and are subsequently reloaded with neurotransmitter. Want to learn more about the human body? Don't forget to subscribe, and if this video helped you, feel free to leave a like.